Hello everyone and welcome for the first time in more than four months to Assetto Corsa Competizione. Yeah, it really has been that long, so I thought it was about time I fired up ACC again and gave it another try. We've entered a 20 minute GT3 race around Zolder. There are 24 cars on the grid and we have qualified 12th. So we're going to be slap bang in the middle of the pack when the lights go green here. And I've got my sights firmly set on a top 10 finish. 131.4 was our qualifying time. But if I can just shave a few tenths off that during the race, we should be good to challenge for a top 10. Now, uh, this is my second go at this combo in ACC. I entered an SCB community race last Sunday, which was a two hour endurance around here. I managed to survive about 30 minutes before the heat wave here in the UK got the better of me, but it has got me familiar with this combo. So hopefully we'll get up to speed fairly quickly and hopefully too we'll get a good clean race out of this one. We are in an open lobby and there's always that danger with ACC open lobbies that it could be complete carnage. With this one at least it had a minimum safety rating requirement to enter and track medal requirements too. So hopefully we'll get none of those shenanigans here but we'll see what happens in T1. There's already a car that spun. We have to take a forward in action out to the right. We take a big hit and another one from behind. Crew chief already reporting that we've picked up some light damage to the rear of the car, but that was unavoidable. Hopefully it won't cause us too many headaches in terms of handling. We'll find out over the next few corners whether this car is performing as it should do. But yeah, really disappointing start with that one. We were in the worst possible place when that car span in front of us. We had to take to the gravel. We took two big hits and we've given away a bunch of places for it. We're down in 17. But in front, it looks like Moltenhoff is trying to tuck it up the inside of Reginaldi into the chicane. There wasn't room, there was contact. That sent the McLaren of Reginaldi out onto the curb. It also caused Moltenhoff to get off the gas. And as a result, that cost us all of our momentum too. And we've lost another position. And look at that black Porsche who came storming past us. He's got around Moltenhoff as well. The yellow flags are out. There's a car out on the grass there. That was Bonnet. He was the driver who span in T1. So he's obviously come to grief again. That's given us one position back and we might get another one here because we've got a much better drive than Moltenhoff's BMW. We're in a good position to dive up the inside into the hairpin and the yellow flags are out again. There were two more cars in the gravel and another one parked across the track. We have to take avoided action. What a crazy opening lap. For the second time we have to take to the gravel to try and avoid a stricken car. The dirty tyres almost cost us there. I got back on the gas and the rear stepped out. We managed to hold it but we have lost another position. Stevie in the McLaren was able to capitalise. He's gone through and we're going to end an absolutely mad lap one in 14th position. Yeah, that turn one incident cost us a bunch of places, but we seem to get most of the back before the end of the lap. There were cars crashing out left, right and centre. Let's check out a replay, starting with the first turn. And keep your eye on that green BMW. They're going to be four wide going into T1, and he's going to get sandwiched in the middle. That's going to cause him to spin out, and we have to take avoid in action. We didn't quite see the contact that we got there, but if we switch angles and look at it from the chopper cam, watch my white Ferrari. We're going to move over to the right as soon as we see what's happening, and then there's the big hit from the BMW behind and then another one as we rejoin. And as for Bonnie, he got quite lucky after that spin because he got hit by one of the following cars and that pointed him back in the right direction to rejoin. However, his luck ran out here. Look at that Porsche take a shortcut and punt him right out. Dear me, not good at all. We're on board now with the Porsche driver Van Humby. And I'm really not sure whether this was a genuine mistake or a deliberate attempt at course cutting. Either way, it wasn't very good. And sadly, things were only going to get worse before the lap was out. There was another incident in the same chicane just a little bit further up. That's Moral of the Black McLaren making a move up the inside of Piso's BMW into the chicane. There's a little bit of contact more than once. So it's a tough move, but he makes the pass stick. However, Piso isn't going to take that lying down. And watch this for a slice of revenge. And if we're in any doubt whatsoever that that wasn't deliberate, let's ride on board with Pizzo and listen to the throttle. Does he make any effort at all to brake? Sadly, no, he doesn't. To me, that looks like a premeditated attempt to go as fast as possible and punt your opponent off. Disgraceful behaviour. But unfortunately, it's the type of behaviour that you almost come to expect from ACC Open lobbies now. And when you see actions like this, it really is no surprise that the in-game multiplayer has got such a bad reputation. It hasn't stopped there because Moral tries to rejoin and ends up taking two more cars out. And let's not forget that Lambo that was parked right across the track on the exit of the hairpin either. That Spitzer, he's getting involved with the Porsche of Herrera there, goes out onto the grass and then spins on the rejoin. We have to take avoid in action. Oh, 
Oh, just felt the rear step out again as we got on the gas. I'm not sure if that's rear aero damage caused by that hitting T1 or whether it's just because the tyres aren't quite up to pressure yet. But we've gained the position just out of the corner of my eye. I saw a car out in the gravel and that's promoted us up to 13th. Yeah, that beach car that we went past was the number 99 Mercedes of Graf. Now, he qualified third on the grid, so was one of the race favourites here, but he ran out really wide around this sweeping fast right-hander. Oh, we can see what's going to happen here. They're three wide and three into two won't go, and it's the Mercedes that gets pushed out into the grass. And I'll be amazed if that BMW on the inside survived. Margev, he took a massive whack. He's out to the grass too. Is he able to rejoin and save it? Yes, he is. Fair play to him. Although someone else in front losing it into the barrier. It's still mayhem. So we're just about to cross the line to start lap three and that gap to Stevie in front is less than a second now. So we're lying in 13th place and we're in hot pursuit of this McLaren in front of us. Last lap time was a 132.2, so we're still about one second shy of our qualifying pace. However, the tyres are getting up to pressure now. Hopefully, we'll see those lap times come down. We've gained another place. It looked like there was a Porsche out in the gravel, and we're also gaining on AMS, who's now in 10th. Although we're just going to clip the kerb on the inside of that right hand, and the rear steps out. We did really well to save it there, but that's going to cost us as we watch another Macca surge by. That's put us back down to 13th position. The Porsche we passed was Herrera and he makes a common Zolder mistake running it too wide on this long right-hander and it's impossible once you get out on that gravel. That put us up a position but we make a big mistake here. Watch us clip the inside kerb right there. It unsettles the car, the rear steps out, somehow we save it. So we're back down to 13th, we're in hot pursuit of VDB in the McLaren now. We saw him charge past us while we were trying to correct that mistake. But it certainly looks like we've got a lot more pace than VDB here. We close right in on him through that chicane, so we're right on his tail now. 0.3 of a second is the gap. He's a little bit faster on exit, that gives him a tenth or two back. But we're strong through this section and I suspect we might close in on the approach to the hairpin. We're not close enough to make a move, but we're certainly close enough to cause him some worry. And in my rearview mirror, I can also spy a very good-looking green Lamborghini. That looks like Spitzer who's closing right in on us. He's within a second now, so this could easily become a three-way dance. I'd like to get past VDB as quickly as I can if possible. We're really good through that chicane again. We're right on his tail. Surely we're going to pick up a draft as we come down the start-finish straight. So we're going to pull out to the inside. I'll be a bit reluctant to make a dive at the inside into T1 unless we were alongside him. We weren't alongside him, so we back out. And then McLaren's going to have the inside line for the upcoming right-hander. So we're going to go out wider. We'll try and find a later apex to tuck it up the inside. If there's room, there is room. VDB got a slide on. I think he might have even left the track and gone out to the gravel. Yeah, he must have done because Spitzer's gone through as well. So we're up to 12. Spitzer in 13th. VDB down to 40. And I'm really happy with that pass as well. We planned it out in advance and it worked to perfection. VDB running wide made it a little bit easier than it could have been, but we'll take it any way we can. Through the chicane, the yellow flags came out briefly, so there's someone who's come to grief ahead. It looks like Reginaldi in another McLaren. The leaderboard says he's three and a half seconds ahead, so we should be able to get a few of them as we enter the chicane. Yeah, there he is. We're quick through here, so we may even close that gap pretty quickly. We take a little bit of the curve on the inside. There's a Mercedes on the infield there, and another car looks like a BMW out in the gravel on the left. So we've gained two positions. Suddenly we're into the top ten. Incredible stuff. It seems like nobody wants to stay on the track at the moment. So we said at the start of the race we'd aim for the top 10. Well, we've got that now, but can we do any better? We've got Reginaldi in our sights. 3.8 seconds down the road. Can we catch him? Well, we're definitely going to catch him because he's gone into the pits. I saw a few drive-through penalty alerts flash up on the dashboard earlier in the race. I suspect Reginaldi was one of them. That is going to promote us to ninth position. Here's the dress rehearsal for the pass on VDB. We just had a sniff up the inside into T1, but it wasn't really on. We weren't quite close enough to him to make the pass safely. So instead, we went out wide, found the late apex to tuck it up the inside into T2. And yeah, VDB ran really wide there out onto the grass. We then closed in on Reginaldi in the sky livery McLaren. And that's because he made this mistake into the chicane, just clipping the curb. 
We ended up passing him as he went into the pits and we made two more passes through crashes. The first being the BMW of Mark Avey. Runs out onto the gravel there and he looks okay but then he gives it too much gas. Probably with some dirty tyres and that sends him out into the gravel again. And it looks like he's had enough. He's calling it a day. We also passed this Mercedes of Citaro. He runs it out too wide as well. Clipping the grass and sliding into the barrier. Well, with so many cars crashing out, the field soon spread out a little bit. And by the time we reached the halfway point, I was getting a little bit lonely. We're in ninth position, but the driver in eighth, AMS, he's nearly eight seconds further ahead. I've got no chance of catching him. So to try and keep myself occupied, I'm going to turn my attention to my own lap times. We've just clocked a 131.2, so that's quicker than qualifying. And I'm going to try and push and see if I can improve on that. Well, we soon improved on track two. This is the battle of the front. Your leader, Joe, going by. Closely followed by second place man, Amatuli at the BMW, who gets it all wrong going into the chicane and crashes out into the wall. Yeah, Amatuli just pushing too hard there in pursuit of the leader, and he paid the price. That crash promoted us up to eighth position. Meanwhile, things for me didn't get any less lonely. The only car I saw for the rest of the race was this backmarker. And thankfully, he was very considerate. As soon as he saw me closing in, he pulled over and kindly let me pass. It didn't even slow me down at all. And actually, our Delta's still in the green with the final chicane to go. So we may improve on our lap time here. Can we break into the 1 minute 30s? I've never done it before on this track. It doesn't look like we're quite going to do it this time either. That predicted time is going to be a 131.1. And that's exactly what it is as we cross the line. Yeah, that back marker was the only bit of company I had for the final 10 minutes of this race. I was really lonely, and by the time we got to the last lap, I still hadn't quite cracked that 1 minute 30 lap time. But our Delta is in the green again, and this is our last chance to do it because the race clock has counted down to zero. This is the final lap of the race. And that's probably the best I've taken that chicane yet, and that's given us a bunch of time. Look at the Delta, we're almost 0.4 of a second up on our previous best. So if we can hold this one, we should be well within the 1 minute 30 lap time. Oh, that's not going to help us though. That sausage curve on the inside, I've clipped that a few times. Generally, I'm pretty good through that chicane, but I do have a tendency to give that sausage curve a whack, and that has cost us a couple of tenths. We're still 0.2 up as we approach the final hairpin. And I tell you what, it's an indication of how boring this race has become that I'm actually commentating on my own hot laps now. It's got that desperate. But we're looking good for it. A predicted lap time of 130.9. We've just got to get through this final chicane, which is easier said than done because we run it in way too hot. We've blown the lap, so we won't get a lap time in the 1 minute 30s this race, but we will cross the line to finish 8th right. position. Good job, mate. You did your best. Bring it back to the pit. And by the time the final classified results came in, 8th position had become 7th position. We lost one of the guys ahead, I'm guessing through a disqualification. But there are the results, and there we are, seventh position. So certainly happy with that, considering we were targeting a top ten at the start of the race. So what are my thoughts on ACC? Now I've given it another try. Well, I've got to admit, it's still not my favourite sim. It looks fantastic, it sounds fantastic, but I just can't get on with the feeling of the car. It feels very light to me, and I just can't get any sense of connection with the track. And the poor driving standards, like what we saw at the start of this race, certainly don't help my enjoyment of this sim either. But we can't judge ACC on its open lobbies and a few bad drivers, because if you can find a good community, you can have some fantastic races in this sim. And the video on the screen now is a perfect example. My first ever endurance race was the nine hours of Spa with the RWB community earlier this year. Check it out. It is an absolute cracker. But that's it from Solder. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you again next time.